I'm Connie Henderson, the environmental manager for Camor. So I'm here to speak a little bit about the reclamation process for the wetlands. Um, so as Tom said, you know, the topsoil is stored. Um, once we are done mining, um, we go ahead and start returning the tailings material back into the pit. Uh, heavy uh, equipment, especially dozers, will start compacting that soil to remove the water. The water is then recaptured and recycled back in our process. So it's a closed loop system. We go to the next one. So this um, shows a copy of the reclamation plan proposed for this site. As Tom indicated, there are approximately 170 some acres that are in planted pine plantation. All those will be restored to a more historical uh, nature of a mixed uh, wetland, flat, uh, a mixed forested wetland system, and then all the other wetlands will be restored acre for acre, type for type. So, would like to go through a little bit of our process for restoring wetlands. And as we go through that process, you will see some slides that are from other mineral sands mine. So, what I want you to keep in mind is we have a team that has been within the mineral sands mines for over 50 plus years. Um, and that team has worked successfully in Georgia and in Florida in wetland reclamation and restoration. So there will be some other pictures if you're familiar with the Iluka mine that was over in uh, Putnam and Clay County, as well as the Iluka mine that was located up in Georgia. Um, so with that, um, Will, if we can move forward. So prior to us, even beginning to mine as we are in preparation of evaluating the property and putting our permit applications together. As part of our wetland reclamation, we collect data up front. What is there today? What are we trying to restore the wetland as in our reclamation plan? So with that, we collect a lot of data, including topographic data, um, using USGS topo, we fly topo. Um, exciting thing is we now have a drone so we can you know, get even some better topo data. We will see what the ordinary high seasonal lows are so we can reestablish the hydro period of the wetland. And we do many quantitative and qualitative assessments of what the vegetation <coughs> composition is um, pre-mining. You know, we're also looking at um, restoring the drainage basin and that is one of the state requirements is we cannot alter the the drainage basins post mining. So we will have our engineers and our geologists look at all the drainage basins to ensure in reclamation that those are restored um, similar to their pre-mining condition. Um, one of the other th items that we do is we do remove the topsoil which we do use for um, storm water protection but we then will use it in reclamation. We also can remove the muck from the wetlands store that, put it back on the wetlands post mining so that we have that existing seed source available. So when we're restoring the wetland, um, you know, we're trying to get it to mimic what it did before. So we're looking at, is it an isolated system, which means it was out there by itself with no hydrological connection to other wetlands, or is it a, contigu a contiguous system that does have um, hydrological connections? So when we start our wetland reclamation and the uh, dozers have started to do the contouring, once we get to the location of where the wetland is supposed to be and they've done all that initial contouring, we will go out and do a survey. We use that survey data to look at what our permit required us to do, what's there, and then we will go ahead and design that wetland system. So we have guidance in our permit, we utilize our permit, make small tweaks, put the information on the dozers, and they will go back out and start contouring it to the designs we would like. This process goes back and forth until our third party consultant <coughs> is happy that we're going to meet what we need to meet. Once they do that, uh, and this is just kind of a representation of the data we collect after we've done the contouring. This is a type of survey that is given to our third party consultant. And this is a design feature that we will get back and this is what we upload into our equipment and this is our target for creating that wetland. 
The next thing that we will do is once we have it to the design specifications and our consultant who is a qualified environmental consultant for our permits has signed off that we've met um, the design grades that we were after, we will return the muck blanket. And as you can see from a couple of these photos, that reestablishes the vegetative components. Next. We have also, through years of practice, um, over at Iluka, a concept called Hummix was kind of developed. And what they noticed was that there were times when the planted trees, because of being in water, so unfortunately most trees don't like water, wetland trees just can withstand it better. And we found that with the wetland trees, if you put them in a system that's supposed to be two feet deep, it takes a while for them to grab hold. So we try to mimic what nature does and you will see hummings. So our terminology is to create hummings, whether it be 20 hummings per acre or 200 hummings per acre, so that when you plant those three gallon trees, they can get water, but they're not inundated. And we find that that has helped the tree survivability. <coughs> And as the hummocks are there and you get weather and natural hydro periods, the hummocks start to fade away, but by then the trees have established themselves and we see better um, survivability. Uh, the next photo uh, shows planting. We do not plant with seedlings. We plant with three gallon containerized material. Um, those trees are usually minimum four to six feet tall when we plant them. And that's just another representation. So per our permits, um, we have to monitor these systems for a minimum of five years. If we feel they meet the success criteria that is listed in all of our permits, we can request a release from the state. Um, our reclamation requirements is we have to have 80% vegetative cover by desirable wetland species. We have to have 400 trees per acre with what we call positive evidence of growth, meaning that we have to prove that they've increased in height over time, um, that they, the canopy is growing, so we will take measurements of those. We have very, speci very strict specifications on nuisance species percent cover that is allowed in those wetlands. Um, we have to ensure that it has the appropriate hydrology, so there are uh, posometers or data loggers that we put into these systems that will measure <coughs> Uh, the hydro period of the system. We also have to have class three water standards upon release and provide evidence of wildlife utilization, which is usually just visual um, when we're out there monitoring um, and evidence via traps. So what I'd like to show you now, and um, Will, you can kind of go through these relatively fast. These are just some of the wetlands that we have um, created um, over the last Elliot, how long have you been around? Well, we started that in 93. Yes, I mean, some of these were started in 93, but a lot of these wetlands were started before. So if you stop here, um, this is a cypress system. And this one was created back in 1996, 98 time frame. And if you can see from the system, you're starting to get the cypress knees back, the buttressing are on the cypress trees, and these were also planted on hummocks, so you can see how they kind of um, weather. Okay, Will, you can continue. Um, so these are um, a couple of the photos from uh, the Camor sites, uh, evidence of some uh, marsh reclamation as well as forested reclamation. And then this is a representation of some pine plantation um, throughout our site. We have had both on Camp Landing property and property further up in Bradford County by the Bradford kind of baker clay that have gone through their first rotation and have been timbered and they're starting to replant. So um, they do get productive pine um, out of these that meet the rotational cycle. Um, just to provide a brief summary, so that's my presentation on reclamation, um, but also letting you know that you know these are all the permits that um, 
we are preparing applications for. Um, we've gone through the wetland JDs with both the state and the Corps. And we have an application in with um, DEP. Um, and then we are in the process of preparing all the applications that we will need for our permit. We have met with all the agencies on the proposed project as well. Any questions? Okay, with that, I will um, ask Elliot to step up here and he will speak a little bit on the hydrogeology. Hello, good evening. My name is Elliot Mallard. I'm a licensed 